What's going on YouTube? Monday, October 10th. Man, is it getting cold. It was like 34 degrees when I woke up this morning. And uh, went outside and I had my battery monitoring off on my APU so it didn't start. You know, the truck sat all weekend and it just went rrr, rrr, finally kicked over. I was gonna start the APU up and had to charge the batteries, but it finally kicked over after a couple, you know, slow starts. Uh, so, you know, it started and uh, I think I'm going to take it in for another oil change uh, at the end of the week or first part of next week and have them put three three or four batteries. I got, I think I got four batteries. Have them put four batteries in there and, you know, keep it, keep it going because winter time's coming. So that's another tip. Okay, everybody, if you got, if your batteries have been in your truck for a year, two years or so, you might want to get them checked and get them replaced. Now, some guys replace one or two. I replace all of them all at the same time because if you had one dead one battery that was bad over the course of time, it's going to ruin your other batteries. And it's already probably put a lot of drain on them. So if you just change the one, pretty soon the other one's going to go and it's going to cause that one you just bought to, to fail too. So I've always, on all the trucks I've ever had, I've always just changed all the batteries at once. And these batteries will be about two years old, and it's about time. Now, I talked to the dealer about it, and he says, well, you know, a lot of times they'll get new trucks in, and the batteries are no good. He said it just depends on, you know, when the battery is made, how long it sat, how long it sat in the trucks before, you know, they were they were shipped, and how long it sat on the lot, and, and so forth. So he said they had new trucks that came in, they had to replace the batteries as soon as they got there. So, you know, batteries only as good as you, as you keep them up. You know, so the more you keep them going and charging, you know, kind of longer they'll last. But nowadays, what happens with these batteries is you run a lot of stuff in the truck nowadays. You know, people got inverters and microwaves and, and all this stuff, and it takes a toll on those batteries, especially if they're not deep cycles. So that's what I'll do. So, you know, today I ran one load, I went down, picked it up, delivered it in Michigan. And I'm about 60 miles from the house or so. And I could have went home. But, you know, I figured why do that when I just got to come back over here. And I'm about 45 miles from my pickup tomorrow. So if I had done that, you know, I'd had 120 plus miles out of, out of the way. Which, you know, is really not a whole lot. It's $40, $40 or so in fuel. But I just left the house. And uh, there's no reason to really waste that money. So I'll pick up tomorrow shoot over to Wisconsin. Now I only got one load a day up until Thursday. Uh, I'll pick a load up in uh, Illinois on Wednesday, take it to Michigan, and then I then I book two loads on Thursday. All right, two short ones. And then I book, then today when I was just sitting here, I booked two other loads. I booked uh, one on Friday. And I was wondering, you know, uh, you know, am I gonna find something, uh, you know, what I was gonna look for. I went deeper south into Ohio and I know I could get back I just know if I get back on Friday night or Saturday morning because I know where the loads are that gets me home but you know uh, like I said you always got to watch those areas because you never know what pops up so you know right where I'm delivering you know later this afternoon I was sitting there in line looking and uh, a load popped up and it wasn't confirmed yet which means the appointments weren't set yet and it's a drop and hook both ends and it picks up, you know, right down the street from where I'm dropping off the other load. And the other load's a 100 mile run, this one's a 200 mile run. So, it pops up. You know, I get a message saying that it's now confirmed. So I get online and, uh, yep, it works. You know, I can pick it all the way up through Friday and deliver it by Friday night. And so I assigned it and now I'm set to be within 120 miles or so from the house on Friday evening. So I'll have a, a choice, right? I can either choose to run over, get another load, which I know will come out on Friday and deliver Saturday and, uh, and only be 60 miles from the house. Or I could just deadhead home and do a load or two on Monday. Either way, it's gonna work out. Um, you know, I'll, I'll see, you know, I got, I haven't missed the, the granddaughter's cheerleading uh, thing yet. They've I've been to every game they cheerleaded in so far this season. Uh, they got one more game, I think it's Saturday. 
So, you know, if I can find something where I can, you know, get home early Saturday morning, maybe take Monday off, I don't know, I might do that, but I'll probably just end up going home and then uh, taking something on Monday. So that, that's what's good about this program's choice, right? You can make sure that you're home for those uh, moments, you know, because you never get them back. And that's what's good. You know, I've been out here trucking for a long time. And, uh, you know, you miss a lot of things, especially when you're over the road. In the first part of my career, I was over the road. I'd done a lot over the road. And, you know, I got three million miles you know, in on the road. So I've been out here quite a long time. And you you miss a lot of stuff, you know. So that's what I like about this program. You can get back home so you don't miss those things. And, uh, you know, if anybody's not doing something like this, you know, look into it, right? Uh, there's a lot of people out here that are doing it. Talk to somebody, find out what it's all about. Uh, and you, you just might like it, you know. It's it's a whole different ball game than uh, being dispatched because uh, you're the dispatcher, you know. You're the load planner, you're the driver. You do it all, okay. So uh, if you don't make the money, or if you don't coordinate your loads right, you know you can't blame anybody because you're the one doing it. Uh, so you know some people can't can't do it they just can't figure it out uh, you know they need someone to dispatch them uh, and there are individuals that have that problem and you know that's okay you know that's why they make the companies that have dispatchers and then uh, hey everybody check out Stephen Neal's channel he's a really good youtuber and he does a lot of live Facebook stuff now um, he's got his own truck and uh, he does a lot of good stuff in there about fixing the trucks and everything and uh, he's running flatbed now and so you get to see a lot of you know a lot of cool stuff on the flatbed side now i wish they had all this youtube and social media when i first started because uh, i did a lot of you know interesting stuff in in the trucking industry uh you know i've hauled reefers the swing and meat took it to hunts point you know, if you didn't get it there in time, it had to be re-blessed and all that stuff. Um, I've done the oversized loads. I've even hauled mobile homes, the 16 by 80s, and took them into some places you wouldn't think they'd fit. And, uh, you know, how that operation works, man, that was, you had to change your own tires when, you know, when you're hauling those. And uh, so you had the flag car, because he'd, he'd carry the spare tires. And uh, you just change them on the side of the road, you know and uh, I used to put them in, help put them in, hold tanker, done that, I hold water tankers where you filled swimming pools, done that for a while, uh, done some flatbed work, so I've done about pretty much, you know, a lot of the stuff that you could, you do out here, um, but, you know, hauled ammunition and explosives, done the blanket wrap, you know, I've done the decking in the trailers, hauled cars in the trailers, uh, and so forth. But, you know, that's the thing. Back when I was doing all that, there was no YouTube, no social media, none of that stuff. You couldn't film it and show it. And uh, so, you know, the guys coming into the industry now can get a lot of information off, off the uh, Internet and make decisions before uh, they do, which is really nice. You know, because some of the companies I wouldn't even have went to when I first started, if they had internet, you know, and you could actually see uh, what was going on and, and actually talk to somebody. You know, because we, we had trouble, you know, or wanted to talk uh, to your spouse at home or friends or whatever, you would stop at the rest area and make a phone call or when you were uh, at the truck stop eating. Because no one ate in their trucks back then. You always ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the truck stop because, one, it, it wasn't that expensive back then and uh, all the phones were there and they even had the TVs at the booths and everything and once in a while if you get to you know when the old old truck stops you'll still see the remnants of that you know they'll still have the phones sitting there and the TVs there but you know they don't work anymore but uh, yeah that was those are the good old days right uh, 
the commodities and it's not out there anymore because uh, you know back then everybody talked on the CB radio all day long and you know you talked in the truck stops you know when you went in to eat now you go into some of these uh, truck stops and the restaurants are like ghost towns right there's one or two people in there uh, everybody's out there eating in their trucks or uh, you know on social media and things like that you just don't have the you know the camaraderie that you had before you know it's and you know people just don't want to help each other anymore you know and people you know trying to back in get out and help them you know a lot of guys will sit there and watch them and then if they hit their truck they're like hey go why didn't you see me well you know you could have got out and helped the guy you know uh guy or girl or and uh, same thing with you know people sliding their with tandems and stuff some people don't really know how to do that right uh you know get out and help them and uh, bring bring that back in this industry that's what we need but yeah so you know i was talking to some other uh youtubers and saying, yeah just do more videos you know get more subscribers do more videos all right so i'll just do more videos and uh see you know don't know what we'll talk about but hey you know we'll do some more videos and i, I could show a lot more stuff out there but i'm not going to show the the driving footage and all that like some of these guys do um if you want to see that you know shoot over to their channels you know i do a lot of more informative uh things but you know i could I could spice it up a little bit you know and get the more subscribers but uh I like the way my channel goes, you know, and, and talk about uh, the important things, uh, you know, in, the, in this industry, especially being an owner operator. And uh, and we'll do some more videos about that because, you know, a lot of people get stuck on the terminology, right? And so you're not an owner operator if you don't own a truck. You're not, you know, if you're leasing a truck, you're a lease operator. And if you're this, you're that, it, it's all the same. Uh, if you own the truck, lease the truck, pay cash for the truck buying it from a bank buying it from a you know a leasing company a third party it doesn't matter where you're getting your truck from uh, if it's a two dollar mile load the guy has a 1995 and you got 2016 you're both getting two dollars a mile for the load now what you take and keep at the end of the year that's where there's a lot of uh, different discussions on you know which way is better for tax purposes and etc and etc so you know we'll do videos on all that stuff and a lot of ones i'll probably just redo some of them uh because you know if you do them over again you you might have missed something you, you say some more stuff and uh we'll just keep doing the videos but that's it man it's getting kind of long you know and got some tv to watch yeah I watched that debate the other night. That was funny. It was kind of like a Jerry Springer episode, you know. And uh, it sure isn't boring this year. I'll tell you what. But anyway, got let's see what's on here. Got the voice on there right now. Uh, and that's another thing I gotta do. I got a, I got this Weingard G2 satellite dish, and I got a video on that. And what happens is I got to change the cable because I found out that their dish the way it works is there's a small voltage that gets sent back through the cable line and they use that small voltage to keep the satellite locked in on the signal so if your cable is starting to go bad and it loses that voltage every once in a while the dish will go and it'll turn just a little bit to where there's no signal. And then if you move your cable a little bit, if you got that, you know, a little short or whatever, it'll go, and there's your signal back again, All right? Or it won't lock on totally, and you'll have a weaker signal on some of the channels. So I gotta go buy me another 25 foot or so cable and, and change my cable out. Cause uh, my cable's been on there about, about a year or so and uh, the weather got to it, which I need to weatherproof it on the end, but I didn't, so it got to it, got in there. And so instead of cutting it down and re-splicing it, you know, it's not that expensive. I'll just buy a new cable and put it on there and be good to go. And uh, so I called the company and that's what, you know, they said, you guys just put a new cable on it, you'll be fine. 
so we'll do that and uh, maybe we'll do a video I don't know but I got that satellite because the uh, Weingart G2 because if you have direct TV see if you have Dish Network it doesn't matter which one you go with because they got all their channels on the, on the one satellite um, direct TV you know they're a conglomeration of all different kinds of satellite companies that they bought out over the years and pff, they lumped them all in there and they got you know two four well, how many satellites sitting up there and uh, they got the 101 the 110 the 119 well your local channels run one of them and your rest of your channels run another one so what happens is if you're in your spot beam area it's a pretty big spot beam uh, if you're in your area like where I run the Midwest all the time I always get my local channels no matter where I'm at and it's the only satellite dish that will turn so when I turn my channel to the local you'll hear it go er, and it only takes a split second and it locks in on the local channel satellite let's say the 119 and then when I go back to another channel that's on the regular channels you'll hear it turn and it'll go to the 110 satellite so I can watch all the channels and it's the only satellite dish that does that automatically like that so that's why I bought it but they should have designed it a little bit different right they shouldn't be using the, the little voltage from the receiver going through the line because there's a power cord that goes in the back of it you got to run in and you plug it in your cigarette lighter and you plug it in that spins it around so they should have used the voltage on that to where when it finds a signal it keeps the voltage spent and locks it in why they didn't do that I don't really know because it would have been a whole lot easier because then it doesn't matter if your if your cables going bad or not right then you'll just have a, a loss of uh, you know if the cable breaks or whatever you just won't get a signal you know it's the cable uh, but then when you find out how they how they operate it I guess it really doesn't matter anyway this is getting to be a long video man all right I will show you the outside of this here truck stop uh, but everybody's probably been here before and you know it's getting late and i'll see y'all later see you